The Texas Outlaws and the Thunderbirds with the score 33, the T-Birds 32, the Outlaws, and away, here we go! Breaking on top is number 15, that's Gene Welsh, out of Panama. And number 14 is Sandy Young, and they take out number 2, Sugar Thompson, the Thunderbirds, and they got a 10-pointer possibility working for the Texas Outlaws. Shirley Hartman vanished for one period of play, is seated down at ringside, trackside, rather. Seated right down below our cameras, applauding her team. Back to assist is a big defense girl, number 16, Norma Rosner, running up as Hartman watching the play. Number 16, Rosner, going up to break the defenses down. She opens the gate, but they slam it on her jammers. So they sit out. And away they go. They picked them all up. Five for each. Young and Welch, a 10-pointer. That breaks the tie for sure. And they go out in front, rather, 42 to 33. Hardman giving some instructions to her uh, number one girl, her defense girl, Norma Rossner, number 16. Hardman banished for a period for excessive roughing on little Richard Brown. And incidentally, she talked herself into something that's been probably the most, the roughest match racing in the history of this game have been, uh, between these two girls, Shirley Hardman and Terry Lynch. And they're matched in a five laps, anything goes match. Right in Saturday and later this week. With Sugar Thompson going out against the big, long, tall Diane Severson. Severson hits and rails her. Severson going away alone. Now blows out in front by nine now. picking him out of the pack. And she sets Choice up for two. Rosner gets Sally Ann Vega for the third one. And that's all she got. Three, 46 to 33. Now a 13 point lead for the Texas Outlaws. Well, how many of you veteran fans will know that match races are an historical thing in the roller game. Any differences of opinion can't be settled any other way. They're settled on the track in a match race. All right, look out now. Timeout is called here. Immediately they call timeout. For the score, 46 for the Outlaws, 33 for the Thunderbirds. For those of you who join 
us now out along the network. We join Roller Game of the Week in progress with the score 46 for the Texas Outlaws in the black jerseys, 33 for the Los Angeles Thunderbirds with seven minutes and 14 seconds remaining in the second. First period of the second half. All right, everybody skate. Point lead for the black jersey Texas Outlaws. Up in front, number 11, Carol Flip Phillips. Pushed out of the way, and baby Rocco, the little chump, gets out. He's a little bitty old thing, but boy, can she fly. And with her comes big, long, tall Judy Sawinski. Here comes another long, tall gal, Severson. The chump is taken out, and the lanky one goes too, as Sawinski goes away alone. Her team trailing by 13. They've decided to do something about it. Hardman yells at her defense girl, number 16. Hardman was banished for a period for excessive roughness, unnecessary roughness on little Richard Brown. In the men's field, no less. She pushed Shawinsky into Hardman, and they give her a point on the foul and a $10 fine on Hardman. Terry Lynch says, I'll be out there. You lay a hand on another skater of mine. What are you going to do to protect these people on the track when she says, well, the referee says he'll have her thrown out of the building if she doesn't stay away from the track. Well, let's see. Rosner pushed Sawinski directly into Hardman. Hardman shouts at her again, gives her some further instructions. A $10 fine for delaying the game. Holding hands out, that means delaying the game. But apparently, I was satisfied it was worth it. Lynch, captain of the Thunderbird girls up in front, guarding the pack, trying to get her own jammer out. She calls for Liz Hernandez. Hernandez gets off on the low side, just above the restraining line, and pulls away. Liz Hernandez. High point skater in this league for the girls. Number 16. Normally of Chicago, Illinois. Hardman yelled something at her from the first row down here under our cameras. We're above the track on the south side of the big Olympic Auditorium, located at 18th and Grand Avenues in Los Angeles, California. Hardman up on the track, belts again as the girl was pushed in front of her by Rossman. And again, Rodriguez says a $25 fine, and Lynch goes out now. still ticking two minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this first period of the second half Harden's down but certainly not out can you imagine how these two will have at it just the two of them on a track here Friday and Saturday nights this week and later in the series Ooh, brother, this is a six game series this is the first game of the series can you imagine what this could be the other games boy that hard there's something else Carol Phillips is a 
a good addition to the Texas Outlaws there. Flip Phillips. Rosner. Leads it up there to Hodgson. She hits her own down. There's one for Lynch. It's up there to Severson for two. And they're running away. It's in there for four. And up to Harden. And knocks it off the rail. And pulls it off. He got five. And Harden is back on the track. Looking for trouble. And she can find it right there. They won't wait for Friday and Saturday night. Probably finish up in the penitentiary. Harden took referee Rodriguez down. She yelled, Get out of my way! She yelled at little referee Rodriguez. 35 seconds, the clock still ticking here. 25 dollar fines on both the captains of the respective teams. and yelling about it. The Thunderbirds moved up for that one. They moved up to 40 now. And the Outlaws 46. The Thunderbirds 40. That's four seconds to go in this period. Three, two, one. Bingo. And right away, they call timeout with a score. 46 for the Outlaws. 40 for the Thunderbirds. Oh, <laughs> go away. Number 14 is a rather new boy in the Texas Outlaw lineup. That's Bob Mayo. He's had uh, some trouble with his right arm and has had a prosthetic appliance built to uh, for support his uh, right elbow. And number 17, of course, is their coach, Jim Carter. He's a big one. Out of Birmingham, Alabama. Thunderbirds move up and pick them up because the Thunderbirds call timeout. Big Sanchez, Lou Sanchez, the Tiger up in front. He dispatched young Richard Brown in the first period and he is put out of commission. He is still out. Doc Engstrom told me that the boy is just some damage to his rib cage. Here's a rip to get Larry Lewis out of there. This is a little flyer. Your questions will be sent along to us. There's a beautiful reverse attack by both the defensemen of the Thunderbirds, and they stun it. Little Larry Lewis gets in. For four. Four for the Thunderbirds, which tightens up the score. 46. Now lost 44. The Thunderbirds. The big Jim Trotter goes back to the little man. him up and big Roger Schroeder gets in there to protect his teammate. All right, skate everybody. Sid Harness, chief referee of the Western Division and his associate tonight, Johnny Rodriguez. A whistle is blown for the jam. Sanchez. And get the little man, Johnny Velez, out of there. And here comes Greg Robertson, number eight, out of there. Here him goes Art Salise for the pickoff. That's a secondary, and it will come a cropper. They'll go back to the pack as number 15. Who went up into position, Johnny Velez, up to Danny Riley. Riley's not very gentle with the black jersey of Johnny Velez. So Sanchez, the Tiger, goes back to assisting. Number 15 is the jammer. Wow, a knee left into the middle to 
takes Riley out for one up to Schroeder. Schroeder, he takes a knee in the middle for two. And here comes Bobby Corbin. He got four. And Bobby Corbin just went to the right. Look out. Going after young Greg Robertson, the rookie. And Danny Riley comes in to protect his rookie. And draws a censure from referee Rodriguez. A $10 fine on... Big Lou Sanchez of the Texas Outlaws. Eight minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the second period of the second half. And now the Outlaws picks up their four. That gives them 50 44 for the Thunderbirds. They've been trying to rack up the Thunderbirds. Way over there, that Jim Trotter. Racking up young Larry Lewis. And he draws. He says. Jim Trotter goes to the penalty box. He'll sit in the sin bin for two minutes. For that knee dropping on Larry Lewis. The whistle goes for the jam and breaking on top. Greg Roberts, number eight for the Thunderbirds. Fine young athlete, this kid. Good, serious fellow. Takes his work, not himself, seriously. And he's a very pleasant young man. Greg Robertson and the Tiger, teeth and all, lay back to defend. Unlike any of his teammates, number 13, Lou Sanchez, the Tiger, wears Tiger striped socks. His teammates are black and white, his are yellow and white. The stripes of the Tiger, he says. He slows up young Greg Robertson. He's got 75 seconds in which to attempt to score. Comes Riley on a reverse block. And they go in on a nice dodge by Sanchez. They take their own jammer out for no score. The score remains 50 to 44. But they get after Sanchez. Meanwhile, Trotter came out of the penalty box and took care of racking up Greg Robertson. Boy, this is a rough game tonight. A $10 fine on Rick West for razzing the referee. Oh, he just stands there with egg on his face. Back is ordered to form and pick up Robertson and Sanchez. Sanchez complaining. All right, Sanchez up in front. Trying to lock it in so young Corbin can't get out. Schroeder guarding the front of the pack for the Thunderbirds. Corbin up in front, but can't get loose. And here's so Schroeder has to go. The big defense man goes out with little Johnny Velez. And he takes him out. Wraps him. He stays. He doesn't want to jam. He's going to stay right there and get out of speed skater. He opens it up for Greg Robertson. Robertson, six foot two, 158 pounds. Good young athlete. His first year as a professional second year. He was in the farm club last year. And he was hit hard by Sanchez. One time Sanchez coached this team. Look out, look out now. He need to use the hands. The referee Harness calling him. Keep his hands off. Uh, the need of the leg. That's the way the Charlie horses are starting. got in for one. Corbin has got one. Corbin is in for three, I believe. Corbin got three. Look out. Meanwhile, young Robertson was racked up on the far left-hand side, up at the top of the track. Robertson was racked off the rail by Sanchez. Immediately go over there to find out about the young fellow. A timeout called with four minutes and 59 seconds on the clock. The score 50 for the Outlaws, 47 for the Thunderbirds. Don't go away. All right, we're ready to roll. Back to the action again. Clock goes back into action. Four minutes and 50 seconds. 
the second skating period of the second half. Texas Outlaws and the Thunderbirds. There's a whip, and Eddie Payne whipped too hard, couldn't make it. He's got to get some racing room. He is locked in. Another whip sends him up along the outside. He breaks through, gets out of there. It was a tough go, but he made it. Eddie Payne, the whip was too much for him the first time out, but he got back. Now the Thunderbirds are employing their forward wall again, their primary defense at the front of the pack until their jammer comes up. Then the idea is to move back to assist. Well, they better get back there because here are a couple of defensemen that don't listen. Sanchez, number 13, and the coach of the Outlaws, Jim Trotter. Here comes the reverse. They didn't make it. Schroeder. Going in there trying to break up the defense. The three-second recovery rule is on. The jammer's up within three seconds. Schroeder getting himself into trouble here. The defenses are working good. Eddie Payne still on his feet. How many times can he take off the track? No score. That ends the jam. And the defensemen go after Schroeder. Process. That's what they call racking them up. Well, they rack them up that way. A big man like Jim Trotter went a belly flopper in on him. Three minutes and ten seconds. Nobody's called timeout. Schroeder, the big defense man. They can ill afford to lose him right now. I mean, extra work for the coach, Danny Riley. And they're already short the services of... Little Richard Brown, who was racked up completely in the first half. Schroeder's down again from Sanchez. Everybody skate. Schroeder's still down. And the band is out. Riley takes the ball into his own hands with Sanchez. up in the penitentiary. Riley got one in there. They both threw at the same time. Two minutes in the penalty box for each of them. Two minutes in the box for the coaches. With a minute and 55 seconds remaining. That means to the end of this period, no doubt. Here we go, both teams with four men now, during the penalty period. Three points separate these teams, 50 for the Outlaws, 47 for the T-Birds. Thunderbirds have got to get a man out of there. Eddie Payne takes the law into his hands and he sends out Larry Lewis. Boy, this kid is fleet for him. idea to go up on the track and spook the kid, but he changed his mind as the referee shouted at him. Sanchez, back to defend. Eddie Payne, trying to get back to assist. Oh, this is Cat and Mouse now, the little man, Larry Lewis. Here they start the hand car. seconds remaining. Up one, 51. They gave him four points, one for the foul, and there was a foul. 51 to 50 with 18 seconds remaining in the second period, second half. The girls are alerted to stand by for the changeover into the third skating period, which would be the seventh skating period in the game. Got to get a black jersey up in the second spot before a jam is allowed. We've got trouble going on in the secondary. Sanchez abusing Eddie Payne. Now Trotter. And now Riley. Every time these two teams get together, there they go. Boy, they're not pulling anything. They're throwing them in there. Trotter hitting just a little harder, I would think. Get off the 
track. Sanchez went a flying leap and took out Eddie Payne. Clock has run out here, and the girls are ordered up into the third skating period. No timeout has been called here. But Eddie Payne is going through the rack up there. Now, the outlaws call timeout. Timeout is called with a score. 51 for the Thunderbirds, 50 for the Outlaws. Who won't go away? Back to the action here again. And there's all this action here when these two teams tie in. The Outlaws move up into action. Number 11 is Flip Phillips. Number 12, Baby Rocco. Number 14, Sandy Young. Number 15, Gene Welch. And number 17, Shirley Hart. From the Thunderbirds are number one, Sally Ann Vega. Number five is Sawinski. Number four, Hernandez. Number seven is Diane DeSoto, one of our new rookies. And Terry Lynch, number six. But they've got to go with four girls now because they got a penalty. The two captains. These two will be tearing into each other Friday and Saturday night in the match race. That's five laps. Anything goes. And I mean any kind of thing goes. Lynch trying to catch it on the rebound of her. He says, that'll be all. I'm sick of you guys. Now settle down. He says, I'll throw you both out. Sid Harness says, I'll referee this game, not you. I wouldn't have his job for all the tea in China. Harden claims he's got something wrong with his skate. He says, we'll see the mechanic. Skate mechanic in the infield. Thunderbirds using their forward wall, but it isn't. It's broken through and getting away Sandy Young, number four for the Outlaws. Oh, they're piling them up in there. Whenever you see Hardman in a pack, you can tell it's salty. Number 14 is the jammer coming up in scoring position. Lynch defending. Got to defend against Young and keep Hardman up in the back so she can't get back to assist. She delights in throwing a forearm into Hardman. Another one. So now Hardman's in a position to assist, but she didn't take advantage of it. She's trying to get her breath.
Some it'll happen twice. It starts Friday and they'll do it again on Saturday. Lynch, the fiery redhead, still wants to tussle. Her teammates try to stop her. to keep her from getting thrown out of the game. Seven minutes and two seconds remaining in this period. And Lynch still going hunting for Hardman. In the box, for Shirley Hardman. In the box. for the Thunderbirds. Number two, Sugar Thompson. Number three, Carol Choice. They replace DeSoto and Vega. And Lynch still hunting for Hardman. Sawinski and Hernandez intent upon keeping her out of trouble. But that redhead is going to have a piece of that blonde hair. seconds remaining in the third period, second half. Thunderbirds in front by four, 54 to 50. And the whistle for the jam. Away we go. As Hardman leaned back and tipped the penalty box over and almost knocked herself out. There goes Severson getting out of there for Texas. Number 13, long, tall, wears eyeglasses. Diane Severson. Good trade when they made her. She... She's a freelance player, signed on with the Texas Outlaws. She's out of Watertown, South Dakota. Sugar Thompson, getting away out of Honolulu, Hawaii, originally. Caught up on the late chase. She was tripped by Hardman, who came out of the box. Nobody saw it but us. Severson comes up, runs into solid defenses. Anderson Lynch. Severson again up to the defenses. Number 16, Norma Rossner. Trying to get her to set into the defenses. She's up there solid. They can't hold hands. They can cross wrists. They break through. And she piles them in there for two. In through the gate. Now that girl was hurt. Oh boy, did she take a bad fall. She took a very bad fall. Hardman having her troubles. She'll have to settle it somewhere else. Severson's all right. She's back on the track. The score, 54 for the Thunderbirds, 50 for the Outlaws. At number 13 is Diane Severson, the girl who took that bad fall out through the gate. She had the wind knocked out of her. And number 14, leaning over there listening to Shirley Hardman, is Sandy Young.
you think. A lot of time has been spent mauling each other between these two teams. Hardman back to defend against Sawinski. She clobbered her in a match race some time ago. And she did with the little uh, number four, Liz Hernandez. Now she's made contact earlier up in the defense position. You can defend anywhere on the track now. Terry Lynch with a reverse block. Going back now. Here they are. Who breaks to the tall timber? There's one. Or Sawinski. There's two, there's three, there's three. That's all she got. I believe. Man says no. I got four. but number 12, little baby rocker who broke from the pack. Two minutes and 15 seconds remaining in the third period in the second half. And Lynch and Harden still at it. The referee Sid Harness would like to keep these gals in the game rather than disappoint the fans, and there are plenty of them here. to see them skate and he doesn't like to throw them out of the game. I talked to Sid at quite some length at dinner the other night and he says he hates to disqualify or banish somebody from the game because somebody paid their admission to see them skate and he'd like to make them skate rather than have to throw them out. Harden breaks at the whistle. Little Sugar Thompson goes out with her. She hasn't got a chance against the big gal but she goes anyway. Still puffing, trying to get her win. Lynch rolls up her sleeve, takes off her elbow pads. She's going after a bare knuckle now. She took the elbow pads off. And Hardman's going to come up against the bare elbows of Terry Lynch. She rails Sugar Thompson. And now Sandy Young is out of the pack for uh, Texas Outlaws. Lynch in the middle. Lays him in there. The Thunderbirds with a five-point lead. Hard mistake to Benny's on the three-second rule, and the defense girl says, come on. Hard the hair looks like it's been combed by a cyclone. Five seconds to run out. Harden just wants to wear out the clock. A $25 fine on each of them already while they're still swinging. Five seconds to go. Four, three, two, one. Bingo! And that ends the period and not a minute too soon. No score. No score. At the end of the seventh skating period in this game, the score, 58 for the Thunderbirds, 53 for the Texas Outlaws. Boy, back to the action again. Shirley Hardman and Terry Lynch. My, my, my. Those two will go at it Friday and Saturday night. You know, they haven't had a match race, haven't been concerned in match races against each other in over two years, and this thing has been festering for all that time. But it'll come to a head Friday and Saturday night in this series. The whip for the Tiger, number 13, Lou Sanchez, and here comes Eddie Payne. Captain of the Thunderbird men. He's Rocky, he's on his back. He's out of it. Tiger comes up against another Tiger, a red-headed one, Danny Riley. And the Tiger hits first. Jim Trotter drifting up there, hoping that Sanchez will get by. Riley's doing double duty. Riley's swinging a freestyle of defense, hammering with a back.
most of the night tonight. Incidentally, when the game is played in your town, as it will be one of these days, the best place to see it is right out on the edge of your seat. Number 16, Art Sullies from Texas. Number 8, Greg Robertson for the Thunderbirds. When you hit the rail, you might as well stay there, Greg. Trotter calling for a key block up in front. Number 16 is the coach. Number, number 16 is the jammer. Number 17 is the coach. There's one. They open that up. Savage drags in there. 4-3. Shortens it up, 58 to 56. Thunderbird lead, cut to two. Sanchez kneeing and roughing. Jim Trotter finds himself in hostile territory and decides to back away. He'll have to fight another day. The referee trying to keep these two apart. He says, join the pack this time. I don't want to send you out. Greg Robertson gets out. And a whip for Greg Robertson. And Johnny Velez goes with him. Robertson is railed. And one. They had a two-on-one. Sanchez and Trotter doubling up on Danny Riley. Taking some thumps and lumps from these outlaws tonight. Rugged team. Timeout, the outlaws. Oh, Jim Trotter called timeout. He's trailing by one. 58, the keepers. 57, the outlaws. is ordered a Foreman skate. Six minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the game. The score's tight. 58 to Thunderbirds, 57 for the Outlaws. And this is, believe it or not, the first game in a six-game series. And later in the week on Friday and Saturday night, match race. Anything goes with Shirley Harden and Terry Lynch going five laps of the most grueling, rugged racing you can imagine. When you say anything goes, that means anything goes. Now, these two haven't matched in a match race in over two years. Believe me, this is the one. That'll be with the price commission alone. Jim Trotter, on up. Breaks through for all of them. Got eight. Larry Lewis was out of the pack, but at a ten spot gone, they got eight of them. They take a good husky lead now, a seven-point lead. 65 for the Outlaws by virtue of that eight-pointer. Two jammers out, got four each. 65 to 58 for the Outlaws in front. Five minutes and 14, five seconds remaining in the whole game. You know, match racing has become the uh, way of settling disputes that don't seem to be settled any other way out of Angie Rosetti, that's the mascot of the Thunderbird, one of the most lovable little characters anyway. If you've seen him and enjoyed him in at least 150 pictures. And one jammer working, number 16, is Art Salis for the Texas Outlaws. They've got a seven-point cushion. And Danny Riley, Thunderbirds, blocks high! He goes to the head, and again to the head of Salis. The roughing isn't on the part of the Texas Outlaws tonight. The Thunderbirds are coming back strong. Here's a reverse block from Eddie Payne. He hip checks him out. Jump block took him out. No score for Salise and the Outlaws. Rick West comes into the lineup. Art Salis. He's picked up by Johnny Velez, number 15. Both teams are at full strength here. Rick West has got to join the pack here. As soon as he gets on, they can jam. There it is, the whistle for the jam. The Tiger 
Sanchez guarding the front of the pack. And they whip the big man. Trotter out of there. Little Larry Lewis, the baby, took him out. Larry Lewis, the little man of the team, took out Trotter. So, Greg Robertson, number eight, comes up in scoring position. Ooh, look at those defenses. How'd you like to meet those on the dark night? They're not going to let Riley get back. He gets back in. Riley back to assist. His team trailing by seven. Three minutes and 20 seconds remaining. They slammed the door on the jammer. Riley got through. They're working for a reverse. That's two for the kid. But Sanchez is going with him. That's three. That's four. And he got him. He got four. There was a jam. Straight over on his back, out onto the cement in the aisle. And timeout immediately is called by the Thunderbirds. Doc Engstrom hurries over there. Timeout is called with a score now 65 for the Outlaws, 62 the Thunderbirds. He's still complaining. But they threw his big man out. Here we go. Trotter and Eddie Payne. Eddie Payne. He tried to call it off. To protect the three-point lead, but he was too short. Eddie Payne got ahead of him. Only the leading jammer can call it off. Trotter tried to protect that three-point lead. Back to assist. Now they got a pile of them out there. He goes along the track for three. And that ties it up. That ties it up. With a minute and 55 seconds remaining in the game. Now this is sudden death in the next minute and 50 seconds. Thunderbirds, 65 for the Outlaws. 
Well, there you have it. Despite a lot of evictions and the penalties, there were plenty, plenty of penalties piled up against them. The Thunderbirds squeaked out a win, 68 to 65, over the Texas Outlaws in the first game of the six-game series, which during the week will show us a match race between Shirley Hardman and Terry Lynch, which should be really something to see. And next week comes the great, powerful Detroit Devil with John Hall and big, powerful Tuffy Brissom. And a fine, a fine uh, defensive team, the Thunderbirds, uh, we'll have to meet next week. So we've got a lot of excitement coming up, so be with us each week at the same time here. I want to remind you that uh, this big game coming up next week at the same time will be the Texas, will be the Detroit Devils. John Hall went to a draw, three games apiece in the last time they appeared against the Thunderbirds. Well, there you have it. 68-65, the Thunderbirds win it. And that has been Roller Game of the Week. I'm Dick Lane, delighted to have been here. It's a Griffith's Lillian Hill production. This program is authorized by the International Roller League solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of these pictures, descriptions, or accounts of these games without the written consent of the International Roller League is prohibited. Roller Game of the Week is another major sports presentation of Golden West Broadcasters.